So, auf der Form Next gibt es dieses Mal vom Big Tree Tech eine multicolor einheit für euren Clipper-Drucker. Und ich habe hier Luke, Piper, Luke, please tell me something about this. W, uh, VVD is it, how you call VVD. it? VVD, yeah, yeah. Okay, It's, cool. Uh, short for Vivid. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Which makes sense, right. Colorful, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, so the VVD is um, our multi-material unit yes. for clipper-based printers. Yes. That our intention is to make it as compatible as possible and as deeply integrated as possible yes. within clipper uh, and compatible with as many printers as possible. So. Uh, as a standalone unit, mm -hmm. what you will be buying is the VBD yeah. and, uh, buffer system that sits okay. in the back. And um, separate to that, of course, your printer would need to support a cutting and a purging system. Okay. I guess we'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a four, four unit system. Mm -hmm. uh, you can connect up to four of the four unit systems. So uh, 16 colors? 16 colors. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And uh, that's kind of like the rough overview of it. Um, But you got some special features in it. Some special features. I can yeah. jump into the now I mean, if you want. It's not only that it's compatible with every clipper printer, but you got LEDs on the front, which is obviously. Yeah. Oh, did we break something? No, no, no. Okay. This is just no. it's doing a it's doing okay. a filament change now. Okay. So obviously the LEDs in front. Which you can control via Clipper, you told me yesterday. So, these by default will have standard functionality. If you can see here now, this is blue, yes. which indicates that red is currently low. Okay. Uh, green indicates that the blue filament can be seen, but isn't loaded. So okay. now what you'll notice is it loads the blue filament. It's virtuous, yeah. Wow and t takes it in there. Oh yeah. Now it's indicating to you that blue is actually loaded. Okay. And of course these slots have nothing in them. Yes. And so they'll win to indicate okay. that there's nothing yeah. there. Uh, Makes sense. So, but ultimately, yeah. they're just clipper RGB LEDs. So, so you, you can, can control make them. them. flash and do whatever you want during the print process. It's up to you. Okay. Like, they're yours to control. Okay. Um, but the, that's the standard and default functionality yeah, okay. that uh, the, the clipper firmware that we, we are working on now. Mm -hmm. So there you've just actually seen the purge happen. Yes. Uh, it takes a little, uh, the little magnet? purge into there and then it okay. flicks it out that way. Okay, yeah. yeah. With a little magnet or how is it it's working? It's just a spring-loaded mechanism. Okay. So it just goes into a little bucket over here. Yes. Um, and then as it cleans it, the, the okay, nozzle. Okay, yeah, okay. It, it would automatically flick it out. Yeah. Simple and so uh, you can put a little tray there that gathers it, mm -hmm. or you could maybe cut something in the acrylic to actually shoot it out if you're planning on having whole yeah. purge. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's up it's to customizable. Yeah, it's, it's customizable. You, yeah. The DIY, the end user can decide how, how it is that they want to dispose of it. Okay. Yeah. And then like, this is actively heated. Two models will be released. Okay. Actually, yeah. uh, three models. Sweet. So, so the the first model is just a heater. Okay. So it it's a four roll dryer. Okay. It uses the same mold, and it's it's a fairly compact mold. You know. Yes. Yes. It's not a really large thing, and that's going to allow you to load four rolls and keep them nice and dry, and then feed them directly out the back to mm -hmm. whatever machine it is that you're using. So that's the first model. That's obviously going to be very cheap because it's just a heater. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the MMU yeah. entry level model, which will not have a heater and it will not have RFID, mm -hmm. but it'll still have all your MMU functionality. Okay. Now you said something that I... RFID. I, yes. <laughs> so programmable spools with RFID tag for Clipper? Yes. Cool. Yes. Yes. So um, there's, there's already quite a few powerful Clipper modules that, that do that sort of thing, school management. Yeah. Um, so we're still deciding if we're going to use those modules as part of this or if we're going to write maybe a different middleware layer. Mm -hmm. Because obviously you've got a lot of different RFID tags out there. Yeah. And we would love for this to be compatible with any and all of them. Uh, because reality is they all just contain pretty much the same data. If we can write a middleware layer that just yeah. understands what tag it's getting, yeah. and translates that into a standard format and feeds it directly into into Clipper or Moonraker, then that's, be perfect, yeah. that's the goal, yeah. So yeah, RFID will support 
Um, the oh, of course that's on the the premium model that's going to yeah. have the heater and the RFID signal. Mm -hmm. okay. Pricing wise, you're looking at both models coming in between two and three hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. That's affordable. So, yeah. 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 As an it's it's going to be pretty much the most affordable M and mm -hmm. you know multi material unit. Out there. We just saw how fast the filament was switched. Do you know the numbers of the in seconds, how long it takes to switch a filament? You know, it's a variable because it depends on the filament path length. Okay. From the output of your buffer, yeah. uh, sorry, from the output of the, the uh, VVD yeah. to your buffer, and then of course, output of the buffer to the two heads. So, so the longer the tube is. a really long tube, it yeah, okay. take a bit longer. Okay. Uh, the shorter your tube, obviously, the better. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but I mean, it's about to do it now. Yeah. You can have a look at it. It's, yeah, great. Uh, so yeah, what it does first is it does the cut. Now you'll hear the extruder mm -hmm. within the tool head actually just pushing it back. As soon yeah. as that is done, uh, it'll suck it back a bit and you can see it going up the tube there. Right. Fox and then retracts it completely. Beautiful. And you can see it's moving. It's moving That's a nice sound. I like that. That's it. It's pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, it's not 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 slow by any means. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much comparable to similar systems that work in this yes. way where they retract and yeah. yeah. Okay. How do you control the heater in here? You control it via the uh, display and yeah. clipper? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'll be able to do that. And uh, we're considering a standalone control mode as well, where okay. uh, if you just want to run that mm -hmm. by itself, uh, then we're looking at being able to enable that yeah. without necessarily having to do it through. So in the web interface, uh, no matter if fluid or mainsail, it will show up as another heater, uh, like from the... You can have a look here yeah, now. Okay. And if I jump into the temperature menu. Okay. There we go. Ah, yeah, vivid heater. Okay, great. Yeah. Awesome. Obviously, that's at room temperature now. We got the lid open and everything, but yeah. Okay. Now we got the features. We got the speed. We got the uh, pricing. When will, we, when will we see this in sale? We are going to see it yeah. when we are absolutely confident <laughs> that it is rock solid. Okay. Um, and if I were to give an estimate on that, I would say about five months from now. So oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know, great. we've got engineering prototypes. That's what we're showing you here. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't even injection molded, nor is it even SLS. This we CNC out of a big block of polycarbonate. Oh. <laughs> so when I say engineering prototypes, I really yeah. engineering prototypes. Okay. Um, but it's working and, pretty good. And these allow us to make mistakes on prototypes before we've gone and made all the tools and everything. Yes. Involved. So we're at that stage in the project now. Next is getting it out to testers around the world, getting their input and their feedback refining the hardware, refining the firmware, and mm -hmm. then having something that we know we can just be proud of and release it and, and cool. well received by the market. So cool. it, it takes some time to do that right, but we want to do that right. So I'd say five, five months. I guess we are looking all forward to this. It's a great product. I hope you will sell a lot of this because this is one of the questions that we always get on our channel. When will we see a clipper ready multicolor unit? Yeah. 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 It's. There are a lot of variables yeah. that you have to control. Right. Uh, so it's, it's a bit more challenging. Than because you have a wide range of printers that can support it. A wide range of printers, uh, even within the unit itself, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to design it so it's easily repairable and maintainable. So there's a lot of moving yeah. parts in the mix that you need to yeah. take care of. But uh, yeah, we, we're getting there. One question uh, that I have is, what spools fit in there? Do they fit in? Uh, Very good question. Because we have bigger so spools, how one much kilo. Do you know about spool compatibility with existing MMU systems? I know that the AMS from Bamboo, for example, only takes spools that fit in their own range of uh, filament spools. Correct. No, so no cardboard spools. Sixty-eight millimeters. Yes. Yes. Wide. If I'm not mistaken, I mean, yeah, right. don't don't quote me on that, but I think it's about 68 mils. Yes. And uh, purely from personal experience, it was a constant pain. Yes. Yes. Have only 68 mils because uh, I had quite a few spools from different manufacturers that were wider than that, and I I had to do modifications to the AMS to open it up. 
And so one of the things that I said when we started designing this is please, get, let's make this thing support wide. Yeah. So it supports 76 mils, okay. uh, which we, we took a wide variety of spools and did measurements and pretty much 76 accounts for anything you can find. Thank you very so, much. Yeah, okay, great. Be, in terms of cardboard spools, I don't know if you've noticed, but what cardboard spool manufacturers are doing these days is they're switching back a waxy, either they're switching back yeah. or they put like a waxy yeah, that's right. substance around the cardboard. Mm -hmm. And um, we've tested with that and we found that they, they work great as long as they have that sealant on the, okay. on the cardboard. So uh, obviously we'll do a whole lot more testing to confirm that's the case, but we're at this point pretty confident that cardboard will be all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As long as it's a nice round thing and they haven't taken any hits and they're... Yeah, yeah. Of course, that'll, that's always a problem with every spool, yeah. Why is that to be the case? Well, yeah. Cool. So, a bit more engineering work, but we are very excited about this. It's definitely one of my huge focus projects. Uh, Not next, only you. For the next few months. And, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for showing. Thank you for coming. I'm looking forward to get one when it's out. And have a nice form next. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Ciao.